Hi everyone, and welcome to a new episode of At Home with Jen. I am so thrilled for this interview. I've had the privilege in the last eight years of interviewing celebrities and public figures, but this one hits heart. I will be speaking today with Rafferty Vogt. He is the son of Richard from Texas, from the book, E Pray Love. The book took off internationally. It became a movement thanks to the brilliance and heart and soul and truth of Elizabeth Gilbert. And today, Rafferty is going to share his insights on the lessons he learned from his father and also from his own spiritual practice. So stay tuned as I introduce Rafferty Vote. I want to welcome you to At Home with Jen. As I shared with the audience before you popped on, this one's personal. This one's personal for so many reasons, from my love for the work of your dad, for what Eat, Pray, Love did for me, and my conversation with you leading up to this. Like, it's just a beautiful full circle. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And let's start off with your uh, bio and then the post. So let's, let's talk a little bit about you, and then I'm going to share the post on Instagram that brought us to this moment. So I absolutely just think it's brilliant how you've written in your Instagram bio, and you're new to Instagram, by the way, right? Yeah, yeah a little new to Instagram. So. Which is fabulous. Uh, son of a legend, Richard from Texas, and son of goddess, Shirley Joe. And then you share that you can fix anything that's broken and you can sell anything that needs to be sold. So share with me a little bit of what was the impetus be behind that bio and what you've written. Well, when it came to Instagram, I was, there's, it's such a big platform. And I was like, well, if, if I can, you know, put my life out there, you know, what are the three, what are like the main points? And, you know, my dad being for who he was to me and everybody else, same for my mom, because, you know, she, she pretty much, you know, was the main, the main character of the whole story, honestly. Yes. And then just in my profession of what I've always done, I've, I'm pretty blue collar, I've fixed cars and customer service and sold repairs on cars, at a, you know, at a high level for 22 years. And, you know, working on houses with my dad, just fixing anything or flipping a house or, you know, whatever the case was, if it had to be fixed or sold or it's just kind of blue collar. That was my nature. You know, that's what I do. So uh, as someone who teaches people <laughs> how to write bios and works with very large brands to entrepreneurs, like your bio is fabulous. So well yeah. done again, <laughs> divine intervention, your spiritual practice is all there. Like it, it, it led you to the perfect bio. <laughs> oh, thanks. <All> done. <laughs> Good to know. So it all started for us when I had posted this, and this post on Instagram happened a couple of years ago. I don't remember exactly when I did it, but I'll just start with that, and then we'll take it from there. So okay. one of the most asked interview questions that I personally receive when I'm being interviewed is, what business books do you read? Well, I don't read business books. Um, I delve into books on well-being, health, and enlightenment. I figure it awares and aids all aspects of my life. It is what grounds me. And Eat, Pray, and Love is a regular read. It grounds and reminds me to level up in my love and awareness. Uh, the book was worn and discolored from abuse, but it never lets me down. Here's the original one that's like yellow. It's yeah. like so loved. Uh, Richard from Texas, rest in peace. Uh, was truly one of the most aware souls that ever walked this planet. Namaste, Richard, and thank you for the mark that you left on my spirit. Elizabeth Gilbert, I thank you for sharing this part of your life so openly, so authentically, and it continues to have a ripple effect on my heart and my well-being. And it was your wife, Mayla, yeah. who tagged you on that post. And what was interesting is, I didn't know who she was. I didn't do the investigation piece behind the scenes yet. And I thought, wow, this is an old post. Like That's so interesting that somebody's tagged <laughs> someone yeah. on this post. And then let's put the ball in your court to continue the story. Yeah, so my dad, I mean, he kind of missed the boat per se when it came to the Richard from Texas gig as far as like social media and all that. And my wife's like, hey, if you're really trying to connect, you know, and 
you know, when you find people that, you know, originate with your dad, I don't know if there's much out there. And so we were searching the hashtags and she's like, look, people are still talking about it, you know? So she's like, you should connect with those folks because, you know, you have like the ultimate connection. And so she plugged me in there and fortunately, like, like you were aware and you saw it and now, you know, now here we are. <laughs> it's a beautiful full circle. And I thank your yeah. wife again for, for taking that step to doing that. And I thank you again for your generosity of being here because for someone who truly looked at your dad from the book um, and his one liners, something just clicked. You know, I've been a, uh, a student of spiritual practice, my own modalities through various people for 27 years. And it, for some reason, your dad just like it sparked. Maybe it's the power of those one liners or to your credit as well. You're just so transparent. You are who you are. And maybe that's the delivery that Elizabeth um, Gilbert was able to capture so well that just hit home with me. So in, truly, I want to share with you, Rafferty, in some of the darkest times I've ever had in my life, and we all have them, a yeah. part of life. I just remember like tons of tears and not being able to get grounded and really shaky, even being a student for so long. That doesn't matter. That's ego. <laughs> As yeah. we both know. <laughs> your dad's words could just like, they became my mantras, like, and it just like calmed and just grounded. I'm like, okay, just listen to what he's saying. Just let it go out of your head and make room for the new or love higher. Like you had that capability of loving the world. Like that changed my life. And so to be here with you to now learn about you know, how you said your dad didn't get the effects of the social media and now you're the conduit in your own way as well, which I think is important, yeah. your own special brilliance to be here with me today. So, so again, I, I just wanted to share how your father had such an effect on my life. So you truly understood the importance of this interview today from a personal perspective, which journalists are never supposed to do, but yeah. I do all the time. <laughs> no, so I thanks. appreciate it. I mean, it means the world to me when I constantly hear that from people, you know, you know, it's just, I couldn't be more fortunate to have that, you know, people out there in the world, you know, 10 years since he passed or telling me, you know, and so it's just, it's a special thing, both sides, so for sure. So let's talk about life when, uh, pro, uh, before book or right before book was happening and you were sharing some great stories with me that when your dad returned, I'll, I'll let you continue the stories. Yeah. So when uh, he was in India during that period, because he went there a lot, right? But when he was in India during that period where he met Liz, you know, he came back and he was telling me how he, he met this, he made a new friend over there and she's super cool. She was a writer and they're like good buddies and she wrote a book. And, you know, at the time I, where I was at in my life, you know, I was just, okay, dad, I got it. Like, your cool stuff, you know, I, I wasn't really in that realm yet. And it was just like, all right, my dad, you know, he's kind of far out there, but <laughs> he's cool though. He's my dad. And, I remember uh, going to some uh, some book some bookstores, you know, where she was at locally, and there'd be like twenty people there, you know. I'm like, all right, hey, cool, I met her, and we're good friends to this day still. But I remember when uh, he called me, and he was like, hey, um, Oprah put this book on the on the book on her book reading list, and I mean, I gotta tell you, like, when it comes to books, like at that point, like I really like my extent of reading was like paychecks every Friday. <laughs> and workshop manuals and that's about it I wasn't really a big reader so to speak um and so I didn't think nothing of it I'm like all right whatever you know so and then he called again a few weeks later he's like hey this thing is going like crazy like they wanted to fly me up there for this and uh you know and then you know the things just started rolling so fast it was just like snowballing into something so big and I was just watching you know from like you know the passenger seat on this whole ride he was on and I was just like man like if that meditation stuff and that yogi stuff can like really like do that and have that kind of effect like maybe I do need that in my life you know mm -hmm. even though he was fully aware I needed it much more before I started thinking about it <laughs> um and I, yeah I never, I never forget that you know he's calling me from the limo going to Oprah and we're sitting there at the shop with a tv you know, watching them on Oprah, you know, everybody knows Oprah, right? And so right. It was just, it was just kind of like a, a moment where you're just like, what, how's this happening? You know? And 
And so I really started deviling into that book and I was just amazed how, how Liz really like to capture my dad, like I can't even, I mean, I can describe him all day long, but to put him in words, like she, I've never seen anybody be able to put like, a person that on paper from live person to on paper, like that, that clear and that thorough. Like, she really embodied his spirit from what I understand you're saying. Oh yeah. Like 100% from his, his nagging annoyingness of poking at you and prodding at you. And then that endless compassion and, and love and support all at the same time, and, you know, and helping you see like nothing, you know, this isn't working for you, but Hey, there is a solution, you know, just all that stuff, who he was and how he, how he presented himself to others and how he befriended people and, you know, how he could tell when somebody needed a push or, or pull or, or just the whole, you know, just hug them, you know, it was just, it was amazing to just watch it be put on paper like that. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. And then that was the beginning of your own spiritual practice. So yeah. walk me through that journey. So, you know, right about that time, I was kind of, I guess, on the cliff edge, <laughs> you know, we don't ever know. We're always the last ones to know, but um, my life, it, you know, I grew up with a lot of love, but not, you know, there wasn't the monetary aspect. There wasn't much there. You know, we grew up, we had everything we needed and that was about it. Mm -hmm. But I had, uh, I don't know, I developed a lifestyle of my own thinking and my own behavior and, you know, and getting paid every Friday that became, uh, you know, a very adventurous party lifestyle that I really couldn't shake. You know, when it, I was growing up and I was trying to become a man and I was just like, what in the world? Like, my life's a wreck. Mm -hmm. Like I can't be with myself. I can't be, I can't keep a partner around. I, you know, I, I was, you know, everything was kind of up in the air. It was just, every day was just what's going to happen next. You know, it was just a kind of a, a re, it was like a tape on repeat, so to speak, which I couldn't, I couldn't stop the tape basically. And so I see my dad kind of coming up and he's always, he's been on that journey for a while and I, and I watched him change because you know, my dad was always my dad growing up, but, you know, my parents divorced when we were younger and my mom raised us. She was kind of the, the steadfast companions, you know, the, the, the rock and all of it. Um, and I can tell I mean, my dad, like he changed a lot over the years and, and we were always close. It was just never, of course, nothing was how I wanted it, which is not really how it matters anyways, but. Right. But when I was trying to put my life together and, and build a life that was, worth living it was happy you know that i could be in a relationship i could be a partner you know every day was just was not like a never-ending fear spiral of what's happening how am i going to do this what's going to go on you know what's going to happen you know because and i'm watching my dad you know he he's over here on oprah he's getting famous and i'm like all right well <laughs> <laughs> i'm all right this is not working for me anymore like okay what do i gotta do like and i remember telling him i was just like i don't know what to do like my life's a train wreck, you know, I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm pulled a thousand directions, you know, I'm hanging with a crowd that I can't get out of, which, you know, want to be on this side, but I don't know how to live that way. I'm scared to live that way, but, you know, I mean, and uh, I remember, I, and he was like, well, you know, you know, you know what to do, you know, you only got one thing you got to do, and I'm like, what's that? He said, like, you got to change one thing, and I was like, okay, and he's like, and that's everything about your life and yourself, I'm like, oh, great, right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff you know but I, I was luckily I was I had the gift of desperation which mm -hmm. looking back you know you got to be grateful of that because you know usually when you're at that point of when you're willing to do something different there's it's a touchstone of pain or desperation or just things are not shiny and, and bright every day you know and I, luckily I was at that point and I asked for some help you know from and I'd seen somebody because I'm one of those guys like if you tell me to go stand on the street corner and ask for this, I'm not going to do it. Now you go out there and do it and it works. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll go try it out. You know? So gotcha. I was able to watch somebody, you know, kind of change their life and be a better person and be happy within themselves, you know, totally within themselves happy. And I was just like, all right, I want some of that. And so, you know, he, we, we became like super close, like as a young man and, uh, those five, six years were just super pivotal for me because I was, he kind of walked me through 
the, the scary side of going down the spiritual pathway, you know, of meditation and, and yoga and, and mysticism and, you know, and just hard love and like straight up, like calling me out, like, and, you know, but then supporting me all at the same time, which without those years, I mean, I don't know. I mean, my life would just, I don't know where it'd be, but um, I was able to develop just a spirituality and a foundation. Cause he always told me, he's like, look, you got to build a foundation to live on. Like you got nothing. Like you're just pulled a million directions from the outside world and you have no way to manage yourself inside. Mm-hmm. There's no inside manageability and you have no toolkit to do it. And I'm like, well, you're probably right. I mean, I know how to fix stuff and that makes sense. Like this ain't working. Like, so, you know, we slowly put together a toolbox of things that worked, you know, and I remember I was like, well, you know, but I, I can't stand myself for something I did and this, that, and the other. And of course he'd tell me some crazy story of what he did. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and he's like, well, just, you know, every morning when you wake up, just look in the mirror and be like, and tell yourself you love yourself and you're a good person. You know, he's like, you got to fall in love with yourself. And I'm just like, what? You know, because these are so foreign to me, but yes, and so far out there. And I'm like, all right, I'm just going to do it. And so I would write it on my mirror. And so every morning I'd get up and I'd say that to myself. And yeah, it was just a, he walked me through a process of like just transforming to like a different person, but like loving this person right here. Because that's all I was looking for anyways. It's like sure. how to be that person I wanted to be and just be content and happy inside, you know, no matter what. So, so it- yeah, it was it was just the, book, so the book then seemed to be the conduit, not only for building your relationship with your dad again and getting yeah. you close, but also just your own spiritual path by the closeness of your father. Yeah. That's beautiful. It was a, yeah, it was a big motivator for sure. 